Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Weather 101 forecast. We are having a fantastic start to your Wednesday morning. Now, in today's forecast, we have another one. We're looking at the winter of 2025 to 2026. This is not an official outlook. That will be probably closer to the end of October into early November. However, I do want to give us another update on what we're looking at. So last forecast, I gave you kind of an overall pattern. Now we're going to dive more into the snowfall side of things whether we're going to be seeing above average, below average snowfall, et cetera. Um, and so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you the average uh, snowfall that we see usually annually throughout the United States. Now I'm going to show you La Nina years, weaker La Nina years in the recent years that we've had, show you what that snowfall looks like, um, and then give you kind of a good idea of what maybe we could even expect leading up to the next couple of months in terms of temperature and precipitation as well. Um, so kind of a different look into winter. Um, once again, though, this is not an official outlook. Also, things are going to change between now and then. Know that right now. So whatever I'm saying now could change in the future. Just keep that up in the air because we are over uh, two months out from the meteorological start of winter. But before we do start off with this forecast, if you guys would, let me know down in the comment section down below where you guys are watching from this morning. I always love seeing where everyone's watching from, um, and I will be hearting those comments. But starting off here, here is our annual average snowfall um, in inches per year. This is from uh, NOAA, the National Weather Service. Very reliable in terms of kind of what our average seasonal snowfall looks like. So we do have a key on the right-hand side here. So we can see in this light blue, you're generally looking at a trace uh, of snow to maybe an inch or two. Really, as you go farther south, though, uh, gener generally you're at around a zero to a trace. Uh, throughout most winters unless obviously like we saw last year we had a southern snow slider which was kind of interesting um, don't think we'll see that this year however potentially we'll, we'll, we'll go through the forecast here um, as you get into that darker blue that's about six to twelve inches and then obviously we get upwards of over a foot upwards of two feet and then as we get into the yellows we're looking at three to four feet um, and then all the way into the reds we're looking at about six to seven feet that's a six seven anyways um, and then as we get to the 108, we're talking about nine feet of snow, uh, which is in your purples here. Um, and then upwards into the higher elevations, we see upwards of 500 inches of snow per year. So definitely uh, just keep this in mind as we go through the next couple of slides here. So the first winter that I'm going to compare this to, and it's not necessarily a great comparison. However, this is the winter of 2020 to 2021. Um, this was a La Nina year. Our sea surface temperatures were at about a negative one to a negative 0.7 degrees Celsius compared to seasonal averages. So obviously La Nina was within negative 0.5 and on, or sorry, and less. So it'd be negative 0.5, negative 0.6, negative 0.7. So this is a weaker La Nina. However, uh, negative one, we're definitely probably not going to be seeing this winter um, in terms of our sea surface temperatures. So this is a little bit of a stronger La Nina is what I'm trying to get at here. However, you see a lot of snow was on the map, especially for the deep south. Um, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I'm saying it's, it's, it's possible. This happened within a La Nina winter um, within the last five years. Uh, we saw upwards of close to a foot of snow in southwestern Missouri, northern Arkansas, even down into Texas, um, some areas as well. This was majorly contributed to by one snowstorm that I vaguely remember covering. Um, this was at the very start of my YouTube career, but major winter snowstorm Yuri. If you guys remember anything about that snowstorm, this was in 2020 to 2021. I believe it was actually, pardon me, wants to say it was in January or February of 2021. Don't quote me on that though, but we essentially had two rounds of very heavy snow that moved through. Um, it kind of tracked somewhat like this. It was a very gnarly system. We had very strong ice and snow and sleet down to the south. It was a very, very bad event overall. Um, it was the first time, though, that people down south maybe had seen snow in quite some time. Um, definitely a very strong winter storm that I, that I recall. Other major ones that we saw, and you can kind of see them onto the right-hand side of the screen here, uh, Orlena major snowstorm, the March 2021 blizzard, um, and the winter storm Malcolm. Uh, those were all, you know, higher, uh, or I guess most commonly recognized snowstorms from this year. I mean, this was the only year that I actually did that because I wanted to point out winter snowstorm Uri because, once again, that, just one that I really, really remember because it did impact my location quite a bit. We saw over over a foot of snow from that potentially. I kind of forget exactly where we landed. It was between 8 and 12. Um, but either way, you see a lot of snow fell within this year. And once again, this is a stronger La Nina than what we're expecting. However, 
Um, keeping that in mind, once again, that's the winner of 2020 to 2021. Now, we had three La Nina winners back to back to back. So here is 2021 to 2022. This one was also a stronger La Nina. However, the next one that I'll go over is going to be somewhat similar to what we're going to see. Um, but obviously, a La Nina pattern is a La Nina pattern. They're not always the same. Um, you know, we can, I'll show you in a little bit what a typical La Nina pattern is. And, you know, even if you're in a La Nina winter, you might not see that pattern. Every La Nina is different in some way. They're all unique. Not all of them are the same, but we can use, once again, data from past La Nina winners and hopefully kind of get a good idea of what to expect. Now, what you already notice from this map is portions of the Central Plains, uh, especially Nebraska. I mean, you were seeing uh, two to seven inches of snowfall in portions of Central Nebraska. That's a very uh, that's a snowfall drought for you guys comparing that to that last winter where you saw three to four feet. So that was definitely not a great winter for you guys. However, still getting over a foot of snow down into Southwestern Missouri, that's not typically common. You kind of stop at around six to 10 inches of snow where we saw an excess of two feet as we got into Jasper and mountain home Harrison. Um, definitely a good winter for you guys there. Um, once again, I recall that winter, um, we had multiple snowstorms as you get into the Northeast, a very nice snowfall, uh, for a lot of you guys, most, I mean, most of the coastal regions seeing one to three feet of snow, but then as you get farther inland, uh, farther towards, uh, Canada, you really got upwards of four to six to six, seven inches or seven feet of snow. Um, especially as you get into these purples, which is in upstate New York and into Buffalo with Lake effect, you got upwards of 10 to 12 feet of snow. So a lot of snow fell there. And I want to compare that once again to last or to the 2020 to 2021. You can see both of these show a very active Northeast. And that's what we anticipate with the La Nina winter is a very active Northeast. A lot of our snowstorms will be tracking this way. Um, and then even if we get some that drop off the coast here, most likely they're going to track up and create a nor'easter. And I'm expecting a lot of nor'easters this uh, winter throughout portions of the northeast. I think that this La Nina is going to support a lot of snowfall up into the northeast, especially the Ohio Valley as well. Um, and that's something that, once again, this these two already do depict, um, which was a very active northeast. Now, in terms of the central United or north central United States, you could be getting a fair share of snow. Now, you notice the 2020 to 2021 didn't have as much up here into the north, uh, but definitely 2021 to 2022, you got a good amount of snow. Now, as it pertains to the south, you can see 2020 to 2021 was great for you guys because of major winter snowstorm Uri that dropped a lot of snow. However, I would say that 2021 to 2022 was relative to your average. I think this is a good depiction of what we could even be seeing this winter. Maybe we get one or two snow systems that do drop a little bit of snow down into Louisiana, central Mississippi, central Alabama. Am I saying it's going to happen? No, but I'm saying it's definitely a possibility with this La Nina. Now, I know that technically La Ninas are supposed to bring a lot warmer conditions for the south, and that is true. Um, however, I have noticed that I'm a, my location is relatively south, and we're talking uh, – you know, the Ozarks, I noticed that in my area within La Nina winters, we, I mean, I, I remember comparing this not too long ago in the last five years, the three years that we had La Ninas, we were averaging over a foot of snow. And the two years that we had an El Nino, we were at about two to four inches of snow. And typically an El Nino should help us for snow. So, you know, once again, I think La Ninas do kind of help Southern snow a little bit because our jet or our polar uh, jet stream dips a lot farther south sometimes. We get a lot colder air uh, digging into the United States. However, once again, that is what we're seeing for our snowfall analysis from the 2021 to 2022 winter. Now, as we go to 2022 to 2023, this is somewhat what I'm expecting for this winter. Now, if you had to take any map with a little bit of confidence, I would take this one. Kind of scratch off what we looked at the last two. They're definitely good to kind of reference. However, this is mostly similar to what we're going to be seeing this winter, which was a weak La Nina that faded into an Enzo neutral as we progressed throughout the winter. Um, and that's what we're expecting to see here this year is a, I believe we're at about a negative 0.6 degrees Celsius right now um, in the SSTs. And I think we're going to get up to close to one, but then we're going to drop down below negative 0.5 by uh, January and February, at least it's a 50-50 shot at that happening. Um, and so once again, I think this is a good representation of what we could expect here. I do think that the Ohio Valley is a little underdone. I think we could see a lot more snow here this winter in these areas. 
However, I would say, especially for the south, I think this is a good representation. You could see maybe the potential for some snow, but really nothing crazy. Um, in terms of the central uh, United States, south central average, I think some areas could actually overperform than what this is showing. As we get to the north, I think it's going to be a very snowy and very cold winter. Same thing for the northeast. I think it's going to be very cold, very snowy. Obviously, as you can see from the west here, they had no problem with snow whatsoever, especially in the higher elevations. Um, I think that this is, once again, I think this is a good representation of what we could see. Now, there's also another winter that I want to kind of compare, and it's very similar, um, once again, to the 2021 to 2020, or sorry, what was that year? 2022 to 2023, and also what we're going to be seeing this year, which was the th 2013 to 2014 winter. Um, and I couldn't actually find a good map for it. So unfortunately, you're going to be getting one that I found off of Facebook with this big uh, stuff on top. So you can't really see the northern United States. So I apologize. But this is also, I mean, this just shows how unique every La Nina is. This was a weak La Nina that faded into an Enzo neutral. Once again, the exact same pattern as we see in this one right here. You see how different these are. So every pattern is unique. Um, but I do think that somewhat in between this in the last map that I just showed you, and I'll go back here real quick. I think if you average these two maps out, I think that's kind of where we're going to fall in between this winter. Um, I think that we're going to have a very active Ohio Valley into the Northeast. I think we're going to have a very active North and I think we're going to have a 50, 50 shot. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and switch colors here. I think we're going to have a 50, 50 shot around this area right here. I think it's going to be hit or miss. Um, unfortunately, but that's kind of what my mindset is right now, based off of everything that I've seen, looking at the longer range models, looking at, you know, past winners. It's just kind of what I'm thinking right now. Um, and obviously things can change as we progress with time, as we get newer data and whatnot. Um, and even as I research more into this, um, but I also want to show you real quick, this is what a typical La Nina pattern looks like. And once again, like I've mentioned, no La Nina is the same. I mean, we can, you can use past La Ninas and hopefully try to predict what you're going to see in the future. But every La Nina, once again, is very unique, very different. Um, but typically it brings drier conditions down to the south, wet conditions throughout the Ohio Valley, South Central, very cold for the northern plains, um, and very active for the Pacific Northwest. That's just kind of the overall view there, just in case anyone is in this forecast and doesn't know what a typical La Nina pattern looks like. That's what it looks like. Um, and I think that this is pretty similar and pretty accurate to what I think is going to happen. I think we're going to have a very cold and snowy north. I think we're also going to have a very cold and snowy northeast. Uh, but once again, I think right here, I think it's a 50-50 shot uh, at this point. <clears throat> and then the last thing that I want to talk about here is our seasonal temperature outlooks for the next three months. I want to show you why you can't always just go off of what, a, I mean, obviously, you can't go off of a La Nina and expect that we're going to be seeing frigid temperatures already into the start of winter. Here's an example of that. Here's the CPC's three-month outlook. This goes out to December, and you can already see through the next three months, we're expecting very warm conditions, especially across most of the United States. Um, really no area is under below average. So it's going to be you know, seasonal average to way above average for a lot of these areas in terms of temperature. And then in terms of precipitation, we're going to be pretty boring, I feel like, for the beginning of winter. I don't think we're going to have many snowstorms. I obviously think we're going to have snowstorms. I think we're going to get cold blasts of air as we get into December, but I don't think it's going to be as widespread as many think with this La Nina winter pattern. Um, and this is just an example of that. The Pacific Northwest, I think you guys will get slammed with a lot of snow um, this winter, and I think it's going to start early for you guys. However, I think for a lot of the central United States, especially the uh, plains, I think it's going to take a little while for some good snowstorms to start to develop. Once again, this is just an example of that. Warmer conditions equal chances to below average precipitation. So, we're going to keep an eye out on this. I'll be keeping you guys updated with the latest on this winter outlook. Um, once again, we might make another winter thoughts before we do uh, release my official outlook. However, we also might not have time with how busy weather could get. Um, so we'll just see, kind of see what happens. But thank you guys so much for watching this forecast. We just have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.